Around the clock, a team of dedicated veterinary heroes fight to save lives. Tell me a little bit about what happened. Start some oxygen. Wow, look at that. Basically, it has full as the stomach gets. We'd be dealing with a very complex surgery. We just don't know what we're going to find in his stomach. Can you bring me a crash box, please? At this stage, his heart rate is so fast, he's in danger of actually having a heart attack. He's still there, my friend. The puppy is at risk of passing away as well. The heartbeat is just not great. Very faint. Come on. The risks are really high. It's not going to be easy. What if we can't get it out? It's Bondi Vet, as you've never seen it before. If we bring this guy back, it's going to be a freaking miracle. on this episode of Bondi Vet ER. You're a silly boy. His heart is in overdrive. A chocolate binge has left greedy whippet Dash in danger of a fatal heart attack. His heart rate's just 260 now, and it's real because I can feel his pulses. Oh, it's pretty concerning. Labradors are renowned for eating things they shouldn't eat. Carson didn't just snack on yogurt. He's devoured the entire plastic container. Okay, man. Okay, man. If it's been in three days, it could have caused quite a lot of trauma on the inside. Good boy. Oh, that's got to hurt. And Ralph is in extreme pain after a nasty encounter with a fish hook. We're going to need to try to remove it with a pair of bolt cutters. Boop. Boop. Dash? On the Gold Coast, three-year-old whippet Dash has been rushed into Alex after he ate an entire bag of chocolate. Sweetheart, what are you thinking, hey? Owners Amy and Michael became instantly alarmed when Dash suddenly became extremely unwell. All right, let's get you over here. I was upstairs in the study and Dash projectile vomited all over me and the floor before I found the fully eaten packet of dark chocolate and mint protein balls. He was limp, not able to move, foaming at the mouth and like trembling, laying on the floor. But when I noticed the chocolate balls, like my stomach instantly just dropped. So this boy has eaten a whole pack of dark chocolate. Um, but he's also had a collapse episode associated with it, so I just want to have a listen to his heart. Chocolate contains a compound called theobromine, which is a little bit like caffeine, and dogs are very sensitive to it. So if they ingest chocolate, they start to show signs that you'd expect to see if a human drank 10 Red Bulls. For a dog of Dash's size, I'd expect his heart rate to be somewhere between 80 to 120. Heart rate's about 210. Wow. Alex is extremely worried. Dash's heart is racing at over 200 beats a minute. And that means his heart is in overdrive. Good boy. You're right, my friend. Hey, you're a silly boy. You're a silly boy. All right, mate. He's really twitchy as well. Good man. You're a brave boy. There we go. We got you. I think your mama is very worried about you right now. I think she has good reason to be worried about you right now. Yeah. Alex needs to try to get the chocolate out of Dash's system as quickly as possible. We know that according to this calculator, he's sitting in the area where we should be seeing heart abnormalities, which we are, so we're seeing a very fast heart rate, but definitely in a danger zone and definitely something that needs urgent treatment. What I'm going to do is just rub one of these little tablets on his gums. It's going to make him feel pretty sick and within, we're hoping within a couple of minutes he'll start to bring some of that chocolate back up. Yucky, yucky. I'm just going to give him a whole tablet. Yeah. I want to be pretty sure. Make sure it comes up. Yeah. Good boy, Dash. Okay. I'm sorry, we're going to get it all up. All right. Let's hope it comes up. It isn't long before the drug apomorphine starts to take effect. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Smell the cocoa on that. But Dash isn't out of danger yet. 
Now we need to attach ECG leads, which will allow us to monitor the rhythm of his heart. I oh know, you can feel it literally beating out of his chest. Good boy. His heart rate's just 260 now, and it's real because I can feel his pulses. All right, mate, good boy. It looks like it's just a tachycardia rather than a tachyarrhythmia, so we need to get this urinary catheter in, and because of what I suspect is happening is he's reabsorbing it into his system via the bladder, so we need to remove that urine. Yeah, that side, yep, legs towards you, yep, okay. All right, so before we even try to place this urinary catheter, I'm gonna give him some additional sedation because he'll get even more stressed with us putting the UCATH in. And at this stage, his heart rate is so fast, he's in danger of actually having a heart attack. Hey, my man. Hey, there's just a lot going on here. Chocolate is just so bad. They just can't metabolize the caffeine and the theobromine in the same way that we can. All right, matey. Good boy. It releases additional adrenaline in their system. It acts on the central nervous system and they just really can crash very quickly at the levels of chocolate that Dash has had. Hey Dash, you've given us all a big scare. Oh my boy, come on. Yeah, that's it. You just chill there. The methyl xanthines, which are the toxic components of chocolate, they are excreted into the urine, but they're then reabsorbed via the bladder wall back into the system. So we need to stop that cycle from happening by removing the urine as it's produced. And the best way that, to do that is to put a urinary catheter in. I know, good man. We've just got to be really careful while we place it, not to tip him over the edge. Good boy. All right, Dash, hang in there, mate. Okay, oh yeah, great. As we place the urinary catheter, Dash's heart rate actually starts to go up. And that's because his fight or flight hormones, like adrenaline, are now running through his system and adding to the pressure on his heart. We're just gonna empty this urine out of his bladder now. Again, that's just gonna help get these toxic components of the chocolate out of his system. So it's all about decontamination at this stage. Let's just get his legs my way. Good boy, you're gonna fall in a minute. It's okay, just good boy. You're giving us all a scare, aren't you? Yeah. He's in a lot of danger at the moment and I've certainly seen dogs this bad with chocolate toxicity just die. So we really have to monitor him continuously. Thanks, Patrice. Hey guys, this is Dash. He's in a bit of trouble. Come on, my friend, good boy. The next eight hours will be critical and Dash will be closely monitored for any signs of deterioration. Good boy, good boy. Hey, Dash, look at you. You're asleep. Well, you look very different from yesterday. Young Whipper Dash has made a remarkable recovery from a dangerously accelerated heart rate after eating a large amount of highly toxic chocolate. Last night when I left him, his heart rate was still really high. He was very agitated from the effects of the chocolate. This morning, he's got it out of his system and he's pretty exhausted, to be honest. His body's been through a lot, but he's going to be okay. Now, I know some people are going to be very excited to see you. Owners Amy and Michael are eager to see their special boy and they've brought along his equally excited housemate, Daisy. Here we go. Here you go, me boy. Dash's owners didn't know if he was even going to survive yesterday. So to be able to reunite them with him today, that's incredible. In here. Is that your friend? <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's okay. Just be gentle. He's been very sick, your brother. <laughs> You always see on TV and 
and what chocolate can do to your dog and you don't really think it is severe as what they say until you see it. It's not something that I want to see my dog go through again. Yeah, we missed him on his walk today. Oh, that's awesome, guys. He definitely had me worried <laughs> yesterday, but... Yeah, all of us worried. Yeah. I told him, no, no more chocolate, it's good, but it's not good for you. <laughs> yeah. Dogs love chocolate just as much as we do. So accidents are going to happen. The important thing is to get them to help as quickly as possible. That's our best chance of saving a life. As a vet, the best advice that I can give pet owners is this. Think carefully about the choices that you make on behalf of your pet and you can literally save their lives. And if you make healthy choices, you will have a healthier pet. Hey, this Patrice. is Carson. Carson, Carson hey. is a three-year-old who owners have just reported have eaten a large yogurt container three days ago. At the emergency hospital the same day, a greedy young Labrador has been rushed in to Gerardo. Wow. Come home and found a container on the floor with big chunks missing off it. Owners Maureen and Robert fear their boy has been up to mischief. After having a look around the house, we couldn't find much plastic or anything, so we figured that he must have consumed most of the container. Oh, it's pretty concerning. Labradors are renowned for eating things they shouldn't eat. Underwear, socks, anything he can get. Yeah, he can get he's very mischievous. Anything that's not at least 10 foot off the ground, he can get to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's been doing this for three years. Oh, Carson. Owner feeds him and then he vomits pieces of container as well as his food, but he's also passing chunks of container as well. You're bringing up the container on both ends. <laughs> Only a Labrador would eat the whole container too, mate. Sharp pieces of the yogurt container could now be trapped somewhere in Carson's intestine. Good boy. Good boy, Carson. I never feel of his belly, hey? My biggest concern for Carson is that that yogurt tub is causing an obstruction within his gastrointestinal tract. I can't feel anything, but it doesn't rule out that there's nothing sinister going on in the inside, especially the fact that he's vomiting bits of container up. He's rolling my prescription glasses and Chewed come up. home and there's glass. Destroyed. Yeah, destroyed about three pairs and yeah, he's, he's cheeky. <laughs> well, let's go take an x-ray, hey? See what the x-ray tells us. What we need to do now is perform some diagnostic tests to assess whether or not there are signs of obstruction in his gastrointestinal tract. Are you ready, team, for x-ray? Yep. One, two, three, lift. Oh. And then on the, on the side, good boy, Carson. Good boy, good boy. Good boy, good boy. Yes. I'll talk you through it, mate. Okay, I'm gonna slide you forward. Good boy. There we go. Good boy. And then, so the thing I'm looking for here is to whether or not there is indication of an obstructive process. Ooh. Oh, he does have some distended pieces of intestine there. Now, hey, hey handsome boy. man. Come here. I'm a little bit concerned, team. This should be a gas bottle, but what we have is we have some kind of irregular opacity here, and my concern is he's got something in his stomach, and that's the reason why he's vomiting. So next up now, ultrasound. Have a look in the inside of his stomach and see if we could see something there. Sit down. Let's see if ultrasound gives us some answers, team. Gerardo urgently needs to find out if any sharp pieces of plastic are blocking Carson's intestine. He's a big puppy. It's not the easiest abdomen to ultrasound. Okay, man. Okay, man. Good boy. All right, team. I think it's all just in his stomach. Yeah, if it's been in for three days, it could have caused quite a lot of trauma on the inside. It's a good thing they brought him down. The rest of his intestine is empty. There's no obstruction there, so I don't think it's just further down. I think it's all just related to the outflow of his stomach. Owners Maureen and Robert are terrified their special boy will have to undergo surgery. But first, 
Gerardo is going to try to induce Carson to vomit. Good boy, Carson. I know, matey. I'm gonna rub it on the inside your gum there. This is pretty potent stuff. Oh, okay, time to go hunting for treasure. Oh, look at that. It's heaps of plastic, a little cloth as well. He definitely ate the yogurt tub. And he decided to eat part of a tea towel. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how mm -hmm. that would pass through very easily. It all came out in a ball, which is what I believe was what we saw on X-ray and ultrasound. So once he finishes vomiting, I'm gonna go and repeat the X-ray and see whether or not there's anything else left in his stomach. Fingers crossed, he's brought it all up. I know you don't feel so good, matey. You sit here. Legs to us, Carson, on your side, matey. On your side. And... Oh! Okay. What we can see is in the last ones, there was this structure here with some gas around it. And then that repeat X-ray of the same side shows nothing. A very subdued Carson will be kept under observation for the next few hours. Okay. So let's pop him on some fluids. Little one. A bit more. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust you with the bowl. Are you gonna go for the bowl? Good boy, Carson. That's it, mate. Carson, you be a good boy and you keep that down. All right, and if you do, you get to go home. This is the way. And three hours later, Carson has fully recovered and it's time to be reunited with relieved owners Maureen and oh, Robin. Here we go. <laughs> he pulled me through the door. Hi, gorgeous. Thank you for oh, there we go. Jude. Cassie, you want to go home, mate? I don't you know. Want to go home? Okay. I think you might want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. You're going to go hunting some more yoga tubs, mate? Oh, no way, no more loaf, no yogurt. No, no more tubs for you, buddy. You've got to be a good boy. All thanks. socks, all socks. All no socks. More. No, no socks or tubs or, or keys this, or glasses. What's this crunk leg you got there, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's where we um, place it. Fingers crossed we don't see Carson again, hey? Oh, that's yes, good. Yes. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. All right, much. thanks Appreciate very much, man. At the Animal Emergency Service on the Gold Coast, Nathan and Natalie have brought in their German Shepherd Cross, Ralph. He's had a nasty encounter with a fish hook. Are you guys all right to bring him through? Yeah. yeah. OK, all right, yeah. All right. Come on, Ralph. Let's go, Ralph. Six-year-old Ralph has a fish hook caught in his tongue, and they're hoping Dr Alex Hines can remove it. He's obviously licked the hook, because the hook had no, no, it no food on it. No. Um, so he's licked it, but he's... In licking it, he's caught it in the side of the left side of his tongue. So we could see where it was, uh, and it hadn't gone all the way through. Thank goodness he didn't swallow it. That would have been, that would have been a whole different story. Yeah. Hey, Ralph. But it's obviously irritating him because he keeps trying to lick it. For Ralph to get a fish hook through his tongue, that must have been so painful. Apparently, he let out a huge yelp, and I don't blame him. It's not a great situation, but yeah, it could have been much worse if he'd swallowed it. What I'm going to do for him is I'm going to give him a little bit of pain relief, and it'll also act as a bit, bit of sedation as well, yeah. because he, we, we got a, he's pretty anxious here now. He's an anxious he's dog an anyway. Is he? He's on he's tablets dog. every day. Yeah. He's on a plan for anxiety, basically, in dogs. Takes anti-anxiety medication yeah. every day. We'll work out a plan of how we're going to get that. How we're going to get that hook out of there. It's all right, Ralph. You stay here with us. <laughs> Jump in. <laughs> Jump, Ralph. Ralph is like, I'm not moving. You're right, Ralph. Good boy. You see mum and dad soon. It's okay. Good boy, Ralph. I think we're going to have to go very slow and steady with this boy because he is just anxious. And look at him, he's just looking back for his Super mum and dad. Super anxious, aren't you, Ralphie? Mm -hmm. Hey. Oh, that's got to hurt. It's hard to actually tell whether it's gone through his lip or it's actually into his tongue because he keeps moving around. It could have been much worse if he'd swallowed the fish hook. 
we'd be trying to get it out of his stomach. The fact it's in his lip, this isn't a great day for Ralph, but it could be worse. All right, well, let, let me get him some pain relief. Yeah. Give him a good dose, because he's going to need something. He's a very worried boy, aren't you? You're a very worried boy. It's oh, boy. all right. Good boy. Didn't, doesn't hurt nearly as much as that fish hook, does it? At this stage, the plan's probably going to be to get Ralph nice and sedated. And then we're going to need to try to remove it, probably with a pair of bolt cutters, actually, to, to snip through the fish hook and remove it. If it does go through his tongue, it's going to bleed quite a lot because the, the tongue bleeds. So we're going to need to control the bleeding, get the, the fish hook out. There you go. But he's probably going to need some heavy sedation. He's not just going to let us put our hands in there and pull it out. Hey, Ralphie. It's your turn, mate. Oh, good boy. Up here. I don't know quite how we all go on this bench, because he's a bit of a worry wart. The German Shepherd Cross okay. suffers from anxiety. Good dog. So he'll need to be put under a general anaesthetic before Dr Alex and vet nurse Lee can start trying to remove the hook. At the property where Ralph lives, he looks after the ducks, the chickens, the geese, even the kids. He takes his job very seriously. In fact, he's on anti-anxiety medication because he's just constantly on the lookout. He is such an anxious boy, they really want to have him home tonight. Yeah, okay. Because they just don't think he'll cope with a night in hospital. Yeah. And even now, he's just... He seems real stressed. Really stressed. You're OK, mate. While Alex tries to calm Ralph down, it's a nervous wait for his owners, Nathan and Natalie. He was in shock, but then he was bouncing up and down, like he was... What's going on? Why is it hurting? And then he would start crying. And then, of course, there was blood coming out of his mouth. Good boy. There you go. Are we ready? A little sleep? Hopefully, when you wake up, it'll be all gone. Good boy. With the sedation taking effect, Ralph finally starts to relax. He's taking a lot of anaesthetic, I think, just because he's so wound up. Yeah. He's taking a lot just to get him to sleep. Off you go. Good boy. Do you want to help flip now? Yeah. Dr Alex has been debating exactly how to get the fish hook out safely and is keen to get advice from colleague Dr Lachlan, who's done similar procedures in the past. Ralphie's got the fish hook and it's actually in the tongue, but the barb's not out the other side. So okay. I was thinking of pushing it through so the barb's out and then cutting off the barb. That technique certainly does work. Yeah. And I have seen that being used. Um, in my previous job, I have seen quite a few cases similar to this. And yeah. uh, one of the other vets out there showed me a technique which is relatively not so traumatic of having to push it through the other way. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sometimes it works pretty well. So I, I can't guarantee it'll definitely go to plan, but I'm thinking that usually it's always worked very well for me in the past. If yeah. you want, I'm happy to show it to you tonight. Yeah, well, how, how do you, can you describe what you do exactly? Yeah, yeah, sure. So if we can imagine this is our tongue here, OK? And we've got this fish hook coming in through this point here. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what it is, which is, yeah, it's embedded in the tongue. Okay, yep. so either you've got to try and push that all the way through to mm. the other side, mm. clip it off, and then get it all the way out. Yeah. The other alternative is how I've sort of managed is essentially we get like a pair of either uh, needle drivers or forceps and yep. basically grab a hold of this section here, okay, with that, mm -hmm. and then pretty much in exact, exactly 180 degrees the other way, we just get a bit of uh, suture material and we wrap that around this point here. Okay. And now, with this side, while we're stabilising this, yep. we're going to pull very quickly and firmly in, that in the direction. opposite direction the other way. Ah. And we see, for some reason, it just, with the barb hook, it seems yeah. to cause less trauma, um, and it can usually come out in a matter of a few seconds once we get it going. Really? Yep. Well, we'll see how we go tonight, if you're happy to give it a go. Yeah, I'm happy to give it a go. And, yeah, I've never seen that done before, but if that works, yeah, sure. let's, let's do it. Let's give it a go. Excellent. Mm. That's nasty. Oh, that's, that's going to be sore. It's going to need a good flushing for afterwards for sure. Yeah. So how I'll get you to maybe hold it for me, because yep. I'll probably get... Yeah, you tell me what you need me to do. Almost just hold the tongue for me like this. Yep. 
hands, OK? Yeah. Then I'll essentially have one hand on it here, yep. and I'll be wrapping the other bit here, and I'm just going to go on, like that, the other way. Not going to stick the fishing hook in my hand? No, I don't think so. We stand in the right direction. There should be no ending. All right. I think it should be safe. OK. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. You feeling confident? We'll see how we go. I'm really glad that Ralphie's asleep. I don't think he'd put up with this if he was awake. No, definitely not. This is not pleasant. All right. All right. So, what do I say? Three, two, one. Yeah. We're going to pull. Okay, okay, just a minute. Yep, yep, okay. You got it, and three, two, done. Out. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That one go. Wow. That one just needs a really good flush because there's still going to be some nasty sort of bacteria in there, but. You can see pretty easy with not that too much was trauma at all. Really good. Dr. Lachlan has managed to remove the hook cleanly, leaving the German Shepherd with a good chance at a quick recovery. I'm so impressed. When Lockie first told me about this technique, I wasn't sure it was going to work. It sounded a bit dodgy, but <laughs> sorry, mate, but, but I, I didn't know. I've never seen anything like that done before. Normally, we push the hook through and we cut the barb off, and basically, in doing that, we're creating another hole out the other side of the tongue. But with Lockie's technique, we're able to pull it out and Ralphie's only got the one hole. If we can make it find an easier way to do things without uh, more complications, absolutely. And it's worked for me just about every time, so I keep doing it. Yeah. Good job, mate. <laughs> the next important step is a saline rinse to clean the wound and help reduce the risk of infection. That's heaps, eh? Hey? Yep. All right. Cool. I can wake him up. All right. That was incredibly impressive. I can't believe he just pulled it out. We've got one hole. I reckon that'll heal up in no time. That looks really good. Hey, Ralphie, you go back to guarding your family. Ralph just needs a little bit of time to wake up. It's nearly midnight, but I've just heard that the whole family are coming down, even the kids. There's no way they were going to stay away. All right, back to bed? Back to bed. <laughs> All right, come on, Ralphie, let's go. Hey, Mr. Ralph. You're looking good. You ready to go home? Ralph has woken up after the fish hook removal surgery and he's well enough to go home. The whole family wanted to be part of this reunion. Natalie put the kids to bed, set the alarm and woke them up so they could all come down tonight. He's a lovely dog, uh, absolutely. He adores my family. Come on. Come on, Ralphie. He does his job in terms of protecting he does all the animals. He's very good with the kids, and that's all we can ask for. Oh. Hey, Ralphie. Hey, baby. Hey, buddy. How are you? Come here. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Hey. Oh. I missed you. <laughs> it was such a lovely moment to see Aiden with Ralphie. It was Aiden's fishing rod that Ralphie got hooked on, and the poor boy has been so worried all day that he nearly killed his best friend. What do you guys think? He's amazing. <laughs> He's a very awesome dog. He's all right, buddy. He takes cuddles and hugs very well, doesn't he? He does. He's cuddles. Yeah. He does. Very important. The centre of attention. All that's left now is to take Ralph home so he can get back to work guarding their menagerie of farm animals. Aiden, can I say goodbye to him? Yeah. See you later, Ralphie. Hey, you be a good boy. We look after your family because they love you very much. Hmm? Hey? All right, you guys take him home? Yes. All right. All right. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye bye. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much well. for everything. No worries, Nat. She's yes. a bit thirsty. Yeah, she's a bit stressed, isn't she? Yeah, she's a bit stressed. OK. Mm. At the Animal Emergency <laughs> Service on the Gold Coast, brand new mum Princess has been brought in to see Dr Alex Hines by worried owners Kira, Fardine and their daughter Zainab. 
think she's squashing one over here. Oh, is she? OK. Babies, um... I might just pop this little guy out. Getting squashed back there, mister. Earlier today, a heavily pregnant princess went missing. Usually, when I go to work every day, I come out and princess come to me. And this morning, when I asked Carol, where does princess I ever seen her? It was quite a few hours, actually, and then I got quite concerned because she was due to have the babies. Labor's hard, so I wanted to be there with her. So I was a bit stressed. Yeah, I found her in the backyard, and she had the baby. Princess is just eight months old, and the family was immediately worried the birth may not have been straightforward. My husband thought that her stomach felt quite hard, um, and her, her belly was moving a lot. Let's get her through and have a look at her. <laughs> We're still worried that she has a baby inside or maybe the placenta, I'm not sure. It looks like she's, like, having contractions or something. OK. She seems, like, distressed. Or I don't know if that's normal. This family have brought their little princess in. They're a little bit worried and, to be honest, I'm a little bit concerned as well. Maybe she's still got another little kitten in there. For a young mum, she she's done a good job. really yeah. great job, hasn't she? Look so at them all. So proud of her. Excuse me, little guys. I need to just have a feel of her tummy, so I'm just going <laughs> to... They're attached tightly. They're having a great feed. <laughs> They're strong. Whoa! Sorry, kids. <laughs> Sorry. Took away the milk bar. Looking at Princess, she is quite young to be having kittens, and she does seem to be a little bit distressed. And certainly, it's quite firm in her belly. And it can be difficult to work out sometimes, is it just yeah. her uterus that mm -hmm. still feels quite firm because that's going to be larger than normal. There is something very firm in there. Is it a kitten? I don't know. I'll pop you back in with your babies for a minute. But if there still is a kitten in there, it's been almost 12 hours since the rest of the litter were born. We're going to need to do something pretty quickly. Don't you jump out, little miss. You stay in there with your family. If there's still a kitten in there 12 hours after the rest of the litter's been born, then that kitten will be losing its oxygen supply. So time is ticking. There we go. Alex Good is being girl. assisted by vet nurse Tiffany. There we go. This is Princess. She has had five little babies and her family are really worried that she might have more kittens in there because they've seen her belly contract okay. and I can feel something in there. We're going to take an X-ray and that'll tell us for sure if there's any babies left in there really hope there's not a kitten stuck in there because I don't want to have to perform an emergency caesarean on Princess. She's still so young and that's not a road we want to go down. Alex is reluctant to keep Princess separated from her precious babies for too long. I think having the babies out of sight is actually better for her. Yeah. When she can see them, she's worrying about them. Good girl, sweetheart. Good girl. OK, I'll take an X-ray. One, two, three. So the X-ray goes up and Tiffany and I just look at each other. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It just wasn't on our radar. It's good. There's no babies in there. That's great. No skeletons. I can see that she's got... Look at that. The results are not what they were expecting. I think what I was actually feeling... is food. It's food. This is all food there. There's no kitten in there but there is just a lot of food that she must have woofed down straight after she had those kittens. That's really good news for Princess, because it means that we don't need to worry about getting more babies out of there. She's just got to deal with the five that she's got. And um, maybe, maybe no dinner tonight. On a full stomach. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we've given Princess a clean bill of health, I'm going to look at these five little kittens, because we need to make sure that they're OK. She like super healthy. I know. What are you? You're like a little tiger. Oh, we're going to escapee. We have an escapee. Oh, where are you going? A runaway already. We're going to look at their hearts. I'm going to make sure that they don't have any congenital deformities. Listen to your chest. OK. OK. You don't know what you're complaining about. I saw you had a big feed. I love this part of the job. They are so cute. Their little faces, their little squeaking noises they make. How adorable. How adorable are you? We'll call them hey. Alex. <laughs> yeah. They're just sleeping, darling. They're OK. You, know, you can go in in a second. Mum's getting a bit worried there, isn't she? 
four of them look fantastic. They're a healthy weight, about 100 grams or so. They're really strong and vigorous. You're a really good girl. You're a clever mum. But the last kitten has Alex concerned. This one's actually a lot smaller than the others. You're what we would call the little runt. But you've got big lungs. This is the one they'll need to keep an eye on because those other ones are so strong. And in that situation, this little guy could end up missing out. He's going to be pushed out of the milk bar by his much stronger siblings. And so the family are going to need to keep a close eye on him and he might need some extra help. So we've got five healthy babies, one healthy mum, no hidden surprises in there. Great. I think we get back to them and let them know the good news. Yeah, great. Oh, you're like a little tiger. Hello. Hi. I think Got your little family back. Hello. Family back. There we hey, go. Sweetie. Now, I've got some news. Okay. And it's good news. There's no more babies in there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but what I can feel in there, what you could feel, yeah. is actually her stomach full of food. Oh. So she has <laughs> an enormous stomach. And that's all it is. Yes. So if, if something is in the belly and it's taking up a lot of space or in the abdomen, mm -hmm. it can actually restrict their breathing. And I think that's what's happened with her. Okay. <laughs> feel a bit silly. <laughs> oh. Not, look, you did the right thing to bring her down. I wouldn't have been able to sleep if I didn't bring her in. I would have been worried all night, so. I did give them all a really mm -hmm. good check over okay. and they're all in great health. Awesome. There is one little chap that's smaller than the others okay. you might have noticed. So this little guy, he's, he's quite a lot smaller. So when they've all had a feed, it might be worth just making sure that this guy gets time at the milk bar yep. by yep. himself. Okay. Okay, yep. I love her. She's a really good cat, really friendly. She's my princess. <laughs> the kittens will stay with Kira and her family until they're old enough to go to new homes. But Kira has already decided the tiny boy will stay with his mum. It's like hard to keep all of them, but we can't. Right, thank, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Ducek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.